Hello YouTube and welcome back to another battle that I have for you guys today. Um, let me know if you would like something other than battles. I mean I've uploaded loads and loads of battles recently and it does say on my channel that I do do team builds and stuff as well and I, I realise that I literally haven't done any. Um, so if you guys would like to see some team builds or see like mono team builds or something like that um, then please just comment below and I, I, I will try to make more team building videos. It's just I struggle to make team building videos look interesting. Because the only way to really do it is on Showdown, and Showdown isn't really that aesthetically pleasing to watch. But if that doesn't bother you guys, then I would, wouldn't would mind at all to um, make some monotype team builds, or make some team builds or something for you guys. So, um, yeah, just please let me know in the comment section if you would like more team builds, or give me like some suggestions of your own teams that you'd like me to test out, perhaps. Um, that could be quite fun, so um, I'll just jump into this battle anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this battle, and uh, let's just get straight into it. So, Fudgegudavagga, that's pretty much what I name all my documents for these things, when I can't be asked saving it, I just kind of spam the keyboard and save the files, it's like... So uh, he's going to lead out with Reggie Rock anyway, and uh, I'm going to lead out with my Mega Beedrill, who is, uh, he's pretty good on my Mono Poison type team. Um, this Mono Poison type team has had a new addition to it, being Drapion, because um, I just felt the need to have an immunity to Psychic and something like that. So anyway, I'm going to go for the Protect, obviously, because otherwise Beedrill is bollocks. So um, <laughs> I go for that Protect, and he gets the free Stealth Rocks up. I'm going to go for a Drill Run here, and it does land, which is... Uh, pretty useful for me, but it just doesn't really do much at all, and he's gonna be able to- how does a rock get thunder wave? It's just- I don't understand. So he's gonna paralyze my Beedrill, which really sucks nuts, because when I swap out Beedrill now and swap him back in, he's gonna take stealth rock damage and all sorts of stuff like that. He's gonna go for an iron head here, um, I couldn't really be bothered, like, saving my Beedrill, um, or apparently I could, I decided to go for U-turn, um, I can't remember this battle, it was quite a while ago. So I go for the U-turn, and, um, I, that's kind of, I'm kind of surprised I survived the Iron Head. So I'm going to go for the U-Hand and swap out into my Vile Plume. Um, I'm going to go for the Aromatherapy, I think, to try and heal my Beedrill, but the Stealth Rocks is almost going to kill it when it comes back in, I think. Um, so his Regirock is going to get HP recovery, and he's just going to go for another Thunder Wave. And this is why I don't like the trio, because all people do is make them really tanky and just spam Thunder Wave and rocks and rest and sleep talk and oh it's just not fun at all so i'm gonna go for an aromatherapy to heal off my beedrill and uh, myself i'm quite happy i didn't get parahax first turn because hacks just hate me i never get hacks apart from this battle where i got quite lucky um usually i just never get any and it just sucks so much so he's gonna swap out his regirock realizing that he can no longer spam thunder wave on my whole team without um repercussions of me just aromatherapying it so on the swap he is um I don't know what that is, Uxie, Azelf, or Mesprit, they all look the same. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna, he's going to get a Giga Drain in on the swap there, and he's going to trick a Choice Scarf onto me, which um, is, is a really good play on his part, but is absolutely just horrible and crippling for me, because um, obviously she's kind of my bulky wall, and um, she's very, very useful, and now she's quite useless. Um, but I do play around the... I play around the fact that um, I am Choice Scarf later on, which is good. I'm going to swap into my Beedrill here, who's going to take a butt ton of Stealth Rock damage, and um, he's going to take another Thunder Wave, so the whole swapping out to stop it from getting paralysed was a total waste of time, because I still ended up paralysed, and Beedrill just pretty much does nothing for this team whatsoever in this battle at all, um, which really sucks, because I really like Beedrill. I always wanted to get it to work before it got a Mega, but... I'd always sash it and then get burnt on my sash, and oh, I, the rage quits were unreal. So uh, <laughs> I swapped into Gengar here and decided to just go straight up for a spec shadow ball. There's no way this thing can survive, and uh, that is the end of the golden. I don't know, it looks just kind of like a golden fetus. The golden fetus. Um, he's gonna swap into Persian here. Um, I kind of give away that I'm choice here because I have to swap out. But I was also fearing maybe a knockoff or something, so I decided to go into Vile Plume. And uh, lo and behold, he, after this rocks damage, he actually goes for a knockoff. So I lose that Choice Scarf that was going to completely destroy my Vile Plume to the fact that he knocked it off, which was so beautiful. I think I was just like, yes, when it happened, because um, 
Now I was able to go for Moonlight, at least I thought I was, until he goes for a Taunt, which is a really good play on his part, and um, I wasn't really expecting it. Uh, he's going to go for a U-turn there on my Vile Plume. It's always risky touching Vile Plume, because usually I run Rocky Helmet, which got tricked off me for the um, Choice Scarf, which sucks, and uh, the Effects Spore. So touching me is very, very bad, because you can either get Sleep, Poisoned, or Paralyzed, and you take his, uh, Rocky Helmet damage as well. So he's going to swap into his... Um, Swoopat here is going to resist my Giga Drain, and uh, this thing is super effective on me three times. I mean, Psychic super effective, it gets Air Slash, which is super effective, and it gets Heat Wave, which is super effective. So there is no way <laughs> on hell nor earth I'm going to stay in on this Swoopat. I knew a Calm Mind was very obvious that he was going to go for a Calm Mind predicting a swap, but there's no point me staying in anyway because um, Sludge Bomb or whatever wouldn't have done anything after a Calm Mind. And um, I'd have ended up swapping one way or another anyway, so there was literally no point in me even bothering. Um, so I decided to go into my Drapion here because Swoopat's got pretty good bulk to it if you invest in bulk. Because um, I made mine as bulky as I could and then boosted up with special attack boosts. Um, but it's not got very good physical defense. So he's going to go for a Heat Wave here at plus two, which is going to do a really solid chunk of damage to my Drapion, but Drapion is going to hang on in there and be able to easily take that thing out with a knockoff. Um, a stab knockoff, plus the fact he was holding lefties and the fact he's super effective. Um, it wasn't really going to survive that at all. This is Drapion's first actual battle since putting it in my team, and I was very impressed with how it worked. Like, um, I, I don't really like how it looks. I really wish it just looked more like a scorpion and didn't have ugly arm head hands like what's with the arm head hands why why does it have like a coat hanger ears it just doesn't look good so i'm gonna go for an earthquake on this red rock it's not really gonna do too much and he's gonna thunder wave me again it's just like dude what's the point ah i just oh what's the point i'm only gonna heal it off anyway um but i guess the point is for the potential power hacks um, which is sucky and it also forces me to swap out to heal myself up. So I'm going to swap back into my Vile Plume here um, to heal off that Aromatherapy and because I kind of wall this thing because I don't think it has much for me at all. Um, he's going to go for a Drain Punch here which would have been good if I had my Rocky Helmet still but I think I get the Effects Ball or I get the Effects Ball pretty soon. There we go, I get an Effects Ball there and I'm going to put that thing to sleep so that is just awesome so I don't have to deal with that thing and now I can Moonlight um, and then aromatherapy without having to worry too much about um, you know really that doing anything to me anymore so he's gonna swap that out because it's now asleep and um, it's not really that useful anymore and he's gonna go into his Dusclops which is really annoying because um, Dusclops is obviously quite bulky because of the Eviolite and it gets really horrible things like Pain Split, Will-O-Wisp and stuff like that I don't even know, I think it has Confuse Ray and um, Rest and stuff like that um, I don't think it's actually that good if, if you taunt it. I don't think it's got much for you. Um, I'm going to swap out there and go into my Drapion. I didn't really want to... I don't know why I kind of did not aromatherapy, because I could have aromatherapy and then gone into Drapion then. But um, I guess Dusclops is so slow that I probably still like speed it. So I'm going to take um, an infestation damage there, um, which is not really going to do too much to me. Um, I don't get why like the residual infestation damage it does more than the actual initial attack, that's kind of odd. He's going to swap out there anyway and um, go back into his Regirock and uh, he's going to swap into a knockoff there and I'm going to knock off his leftovers which is um, pretty useful I guess and I'm going to get my Black Sludge recovery there which is good for me because um, I was getting some recovery and stuff. Um, the Black Sludge is actually quite useful because like I get power hacked again because uh, Black Sludge if you have if you're playing by those rules where you can't have multiple items you can have one Pokemon with Black Sludge and one Pokemon with leftovers on one who poison which is quite helpful. Um, he wakes up here actually and goes for a Iron Head. I was really hoping I didn't flinch because you know Iron Head and Teak Wave could have been a nasty combination. Um, I'm gonna go for an Earthquake there just to finish it off, and the Reggie Rock is gonna go down to the Drapion. So. Um, that was pretty good. I need to think of a name for Drapion. If you guys can think of a good name for my Drapion, then please comment below and um, just comment like at Drapion or hashtag Drapion and then I'll find it and um, be able to rename my Drapion. Um, 
So in comes Frolligator anyway, and he's going to set up some Dragon Dances, which is not great. Um, I'm going to go for a Taunt so he doesn't set up any more. Pretty much sacrificing my um, Jopion off to this incoming Waterfall. Jopion had done its job, it was paralysed, it couldn't really do much else, so I didn't really mind losing it. And I thought taunting it so it didn't set up, to me, or set up on me too much was a much better idea than trying to just knock off and do a bit of damage to it. So um, I'm going to lose my Jopion there, and then I'm going to take the swap into my Vileplume. I knew this thing would probably be ca carrying Ice Punch, but um, I didn't really mind because I was hoping for the um, residual Rocky Helmet damage, then remembered I didn't have a Rocky Helmet on, but I get another Effects Bore, so it still was a worthwhile swap because now that massive threat of Feraligator is asleep, and um, I don't really have to worry that much about... Well, I have to worry if it wakes up, but I don't have to worry that much about it whilst it's sleeping. So um, I'm going to go into my Twist Guard Needle King here and go for a Thunderbolt. And um, it's going to do a really huge amount of damage and it just survives. And uh, he's going to stay asleep for a second turn, which is good. If he had the first turn wake up, then that could have um, kind of been really scary. Um, so I'm just going to go for another Thunderbolt there and be able to take out the Feraligator which is uh, good because that was going to be quite a threat to my team, I think, especially with the Dragon Dance boosts up as well. Um, don't really want to be taking no Dragon Dances or uh, Waterfalls or Ice Punches or anything like that, especially not on Nido King. Um, I need to plug my thing in because it's shouting at me to charge it. So there we go, just charge it. And uh, I'm going to swap into my Golbat here as he brings in Dusclops. And uh, I'm going to avoid the Will-O-Wisp, which is really, really lucky for the first turn, but he's obviously going to Will-O-Wisp, just keep spamming it until it lands anyway. So uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to go for a Nasty Plot, and he's going to go for a Quad-Resisted um, Infestation, but uh, the Infestation obviously for some reason does more damage like there than it does with the initial attack. I mean, really, it should do nothing because I Quad-Resist it, but I didn't make the game. So I'm going to go for an Air Slash, and he's going to avoid, which is totally unfair <laughs> and uh, how can anything that slow with a weird mustache and gropey hands like avoid an air slash from an amazing gold bat i mean this gold bat is op i love this set so much this gold bat actually survived a um an arceus's judgment i think or an arceus is something after a boost and i was really impressed with it um so anyway i'm gonna go for a roost here roost off all that damage and uh, he's just gonna go for another infestation to do a little bit of damage to me it's just not really gonna do much to me at all and I'm going to take the burn damage on top of that, which kind of sucks. So as I'm taking the infestation and the burn damage and all sorts of just damage really, I'm just going to try and fire off air slashes that don't miss. And uh, that, that does, that's a lot of damage. I mean, that is a crit, but uh, I was quite impressed with the amount of damage that it did. Uh, he's going to go for a pain split and take some of my HP, which is unfair <laughs> because I've only just roosted and I've got infestation, burn, misses and all sorts on against my side. So um I'm starting to just slowly die, really. I go for another air slash here, because I don't want to have to roost up and have him steal my HP again. I was just really hoping for some flinches, and I do get lucky there, and I do get a flinch, which was um, kind of what I really, really wanted. And I'm going to take the infestation there, and I'm going to actually survive on 2 HP um, to go for another air slash. Again, I didn't want to go for a roost in case he went for a pain split, and he actually has rest. So I was like, well, I could have just gone for a roost, and then I'd be on full HP, and oh, oh, oh. so frustrating. But uh, this thing is now asleep, so I don't have to worry about it too much, unless it's got Chesto, but it's obviously going to be Eviolite, so um, it has no real way of waking itself up. I don't think this thing's got Sleep Talk, it's got Infestation, will o Pain Split and Rest, so no, it doesn't have Sleep Talk. So um, I'm going to swap in my Gengar here. I knew he would swap out predicting a Shadow Ball for the immunity on his Persian, so I actually just went out for a Giga Drain to um, take out because I am specs so Giga Drain was going to take it out anyway because Gengar's got crazy special attack and it was a crit as well so um, that is the end of the Persian which was pretty easy because he just swapped straight into an attack and just got KO'd really so that was pretty useful. Um, he's going to swap back into his Dust Clops now and um, I'm going to swap out obviously because now I'm specced in. Um, I just wanted to be able to somehow get that Persian out of the way so I was able to always I, like, I had my win condition, which was Gengar, Shadow Ball, because it was Specs. It was easy to take this thing out. So I just needed to ha find a way of bluffing him to swap into Persian so I could take out Persian so I wouldn't have that threat of him actually swapping back into a Shadow Ball um, if I didn't take the Persian out. So I'm going to have my Needle King here, and I'm just going to go for an Earth Power. I'm choiced, so I just wanted to go for what was Stab. So um, I'm, I've got my Stab Earth Power, obviously, so I'm just going to keep going for that. 
um, I just spam it and spam it and spam it until I'm able to take this thing out. Um, he's actually going to wake up and go for an infestation here and uh, make it so I can't swap out. But I uh, wasn't really planning on swapping out anyway. I don't mind if Nidoking dies because like I said, this is his last Pokemon and Gengar is going to be my win condition for this battle. So as long as Gengar's alive, I don't have to worry. Um, so I'm just going to go for another Earth Power here. I'm almost going to take it out and he's going to go for a Pain Split and um, steal remnants of my HP from me, which uh, is really, really sucky. And I'm going to take more infestation damage. And uh, this is why I don't like infestation, because every turn it's like infestation, 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 infestation. But um, he's actually going to forfeit there. I guess he realised that I was always going to win because of my Gengar and just didn't really want to stall it out any longer. Which is good, because I don't like stall at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed that battle, and um, please leave a comment in the comment section below if um, you can think of a name for my Drapion, because uh, he really needs a good nickname. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you around. Goodbye.